Good evening YouTube, my name is Yusuf and you are watching my news channel. Today I will be covering a sea flare that actually produced a CME. So it happened from Sunspot 2816. This group of sunspots, this is actually not a single sunspot, but a group as you can see. Um, let me zoom that out. Um, there is a single sunspot next to it on the sun, a bit further, 2818. And there is a sunspot leaving the solar disk, 2870. So yesterday, um, this particular group of sunspots um, released a sea flare, uh, which had, uh, which actually produced uh, a smaller series of similar uh, flares, and this is because it kept arcing. And I will show you. So um, this is yes before i do that this is again um the sense in question but here we can actually see um that basically this group of sunspots magnetically is as a whole so um this is the reason why there was a small solar tsunami when that happened and uh consequently a cme has been produced because of its size this is clearly visible over here so i will go uh when that actually happened there it is we'll play it again boom you can actually see it keeps arcing um, i mean these regions they are uh, interconnected with each other but actively you can see them exchange uh, electrical current via these magnetic loops and yeah i think this has still the potential of future flaring uh, especially if it actually survives um, when going around the solar disk um, and coming back from the other side let's take a look at it uh, slowly so this is just prior to the event Boom, it happens. And let me go frame by frame. This is the initial uh, sea flare, the initial blast, which produced actually the CME. But then you can see it remained active. And these are sort of these uh, successive, as you can see. Um, so this is the X-ray chart. And we can see actually the flaring activity. Um, here, this is the initial um, flare that produced actually that small solar tsunami and that CME consequently. These are smaller, um, almost identical sea flares, uh, which happened right after. And this is what we are looking now. When we move, see, frame by frame, it's all in the same region and it's all arcing in that same, um, in that same spot. Let me go back slowly. So there you have it. Um, so, what can be expected of that CME? Um, the CME in itself is not very dense. In fact, there is a small portion, half of it. It covers a wide area, uh, as I already mentioned it, but only a small portion of that, so half of it, is actually more or less dense. Um, this is... A less denser part um, however this was earth facing so yes we will get hit um, but the question remains whether this is a glancing blow or a direct hit and I will show why uh, but first let's take a look at it um, from the C2 coronagraphs perspective here it is now we'll actually slow this down in speed stop it and simply go frame by frame uh, until we actually see it uh, no, 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 no. i'm going the opposite side you know what let's just play the movie uh yes stop over here so why does this thing not go oh yes i have to play it stop yes i believe if i go now yes like this 
Okay, we're back in business. There it is. Uh, so as you can see, it covers a large area, but this isn't really a dense uh, CME if you ask me. Although some might say otherwise. So um, let's move further. Let's take a look at the analysis file. And for once, they have included this in the simulation. Uh, thankfully. So basically, we can see the impact over here. It will happen on the 25th. Let me just go right at it. Yes, the 25th. This is Sunday. So Sunday, we can expect an impact. It is. Um, a small impact when we look at the density uh, right over here let me go just a little bit back so as you can see actually the endless spiral shows what i was saying um the densest part will miss us i think this can be called a glancing blow it is a direct hit but we will not be hit by the densest part as usual um <laughs> it has a tendency to go <laughs> to stereo a the sun really doesn't like this satellite as you can see and indeed we see uh the density is actually higher when it hits uh <laughs> this poor satellite but um our planet will get what seems to be a direct hit but nevertheless um the less denser part however if we look at the speed and this is really odd we see the opposite um velocity wise these are actually accelerated particles because we can see it when it hits see this red over here this is at least 600 kilometers a second and mind you this is just a prediction it could be higher when it actually hits and we see this over here in this line there's actually a bump which goes to 600 kilometers a second so might be more it might be less this is only a prediction but basically what this means we will get hit by uh, the less dense part of that cme but uh, these are accelerated particles and um, if we look actually at um, the nasa simulation from iswa we can see a similar trend it shows actually um, a full hit but clearly the densest part leans towards stereo a uh, as you can see this is the dense part and it will clearly mess us uh, no doubt about it but mind you um, the particles here will be accelerated uh, they will be fast moving as we saw on the endless spiral over here so um this brings me to what kind of effect can we expect of that cme it all depends on a couple of factors and the most important is the bz component it all depends on uh, from what angle the solar wind will actually hit us and most of all if there's already something going on i will quickly put uh, the uh, solar wind from today to actually explain this a little bit so we go to solar wind if for example um the impact happens when there's actually a strong negative bz opening this could mean that the effect the effect will be strengthened um if uh, the solar wind is tilted in the opposite direction and uh, the cme um, hits us this could also have um, an effect on our planet and there is also, of course, the mcferrin russell effect, which is still ongoing. And this basically means um, the Earth is tilted at 20 degrees. And in summer and winter, the solar wind has a hard time actually um, connecting or having um, a greater effect on our planet because of this tilt of 23 degrees. But in spring and autumn, the opposite happens. The solar wind um, connects easily. Uh, with earth and has a greater interaction so um, i would say yes nasa itself predicts um, a g2 storm if i'm not um, mistaken and so they think a kp6 could be reached and i do believe they might be right and if this happens while um, the busy component is tilted south and shows negative values maybe we could even see a kp7 
but it, it all depends it all depends because um we will get hit by the less denser part and my experience tells me density is actually as important as speed so if the speed is there but not the density uh, the expectation um, could be lessened but on the other hand um, same thing could be said if it is a fast moving CME but there is basically no density then you have uh, the same effect uh, a lessened effect on impact so we will see how this plays out um, but I really do believe we will have a G2 stone level and by the way um, if you um, want to know more about the scales and such I will leave a link in the description box of the NOAA uh, space weather scales because they have also the radio blackout scales um, and the solar radiation stone scales. So if you're not familiar, familiar with them, you can always check that link. And in fact, you can actually easily download a PDF format uh, in one page uh, of those scales. This is, all uh, this is always uh, handy. To understand actually uh, what happens okay um, if you haven't already done I strongly suggest like always to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss um, any future content uh, don't uh, forget to hit the like button if you actually enjoyed the video and I guess we see each other next time bye everyone